Good morning, sunshine. Good morning, Reverend. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I am awesome. I won't be on camera. This is all about you. Uh huh. Uh huh. All about the, uh, you, Coach. How are you? Today is a good day. The last child just walked out the door. So everybody's good. Okay. Everybody's so going coping. to school. And um, it's just me and my husband here. So, yeah. Okay, so let's talk. Can I let's get your go. undivided attention? You got it. Can you look in the camera and tell me about your journey getting here and refer to me as Dr. AJ? Because that is my name, ma'am. Don't be calling me my whole government name, okay? Well, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me shed a little light on our conversation. Ah. <laughs> and here in my new office, I also keep a tube of lipstick. So, oh, shut! hold on. I forgot we were, um, you said you were going to use this for something, didn't you? Dr. AJ, mm -hmm. what questions did you have? Oh, you can't do it till uh, what questions I got is why you didn't do this for you got on this camera. That's what questions I got. This is why this be longer than 10 minutes messing with y'all black people. I'm not black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm brown. Okay, brown. <laughs> Come on, brown, salt and pepper. Let Good morning, Dr. Head. Good morning, Dr. AJ. How are you? <laughs> I am awesome. Thank you for being here, Coach Carla. How does it feel to be a coach? Uh, it feels pretty good. And I think it will feel even better um, in the next, in the coming years after I have perfected my craft and reached my, what, the initial $25,000 and moving forward. Amen. So tell us about your journey to life coaching. How did you get here as a newly certified Black <laughs> woman life coach? So my journey, as you know, is quite interesting. Dr. AJ and I met in a um, powerful, powerful women in business group back in maybe 2014 or so. And then we met in person in 2015. And I just felt like um, my life, I had other obligations and I kept putting myself on the back burner. And had I gone ahead and proceeded with the life coaching course prior to now, I feel like my life would have been different. But I also feel like everything happens for a reason and it happens at the right time. So God's timing is really impeccable. And with, um, with the time that I did choose to become a life coach, it has been, it is going to prove to be the perfect time. So what made you finally, finally, I mean, 2014, 2015, 2021, <laughs> what made you finally say yes and take that next step to becoming a coach? Because I needed to start doing some things for myself. The goals that I set for myself, I needed to go ahead and to begin to uh, accomplish them. My children are older. They um, are beginning to have their own lives. And I didn't want to be the, um, the little retired lady sitting at home by herself. And I don't want to ever have that wish I could have, should have attitude ever. I feel you. We get a lot of people like that. So you said yes, you did something for yourself. What was the journey like through the training itself that made you realize, ooh. So the training was perfect. I really liked the fact that I could stop it and start it whenever I needed to. The children were actually at home and my husband were actually at home while I did the training. So I had to seclude myself. Um, for a period of time and 
I like the ability to do the modules. Let's say if one module, I think it was 32 minutes. I was able to seclude myself for 32 minutes at a time and then pop back out and then seclude myself for maybe an hour at a time and then pop back out. And also a part of the journey that I found most interesting was the first thing is you are your first client. And then the questions that were asked, what would you like your legacy to be? What would you like people to say at your funeral? Those types of questions were very um, introspective and it gives you a chance to look at yourself and where you are and where you want to go. Wow, yes, because we definitely do this for ourselves first. And I remember having that same aha moment in training, like, oh, okay, you know. Mm -hmm. And you can literally tell your client, I have sat where you are. So that's my favorite part of the journey. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like the training catered to your learning style? I know we have some people that learn different, whether it's ADHD or some people say, Dr. AJ, I got MS or, you know, just got a lot going on, whether you're auditory, visual, kinesthetic, do you feel like it kind of met you where you are? Because I love your, your, what did you call it? Just your moments of seclusion, 30 minutes here, an hour here. So when mm -hmm. you got back to the training, did it give you what you needed in those segments? Absolutely not. I prefer to be in person. I um, like to touch and feel, what do they call it? Tactile. I'm a tactile learner. I am one of those learners that I learn best when I put it into action. And I know that you have done some in-person sessions um, prior, uh, especially prior to COVID. And I feel like had I been in person, um, I would have been able to, well, you do provide access. You did answer the questions I had as I was going along. So that was perfect. But I'm just the type of, I'm a people person. So I would have enjoyed being in the classroom setting and actually going through the modules with an actual person. Uh, especially when we did the community coaching and the co-coaching. So had I had an actual person here or, <laughs> or there, I would have been able, I feel like that would have been a lot more beneficial, but I understand under the circumstances. <laughs> and for me, Dr. AJ, I know I have plenty of opportunity to get that done in person. <laughs> thank you for putting the words right. Thank you, because I was about to get you. Like, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, don't you act like we did that. Come on, Carla, come to Georgia. Come on, Carla, where you at? Carla. Okay, now, Coach Carla. Okay, but people who take this online version, they are jealous of the in-person. And I get it. I miss it so much. Just the feeling I would have walking in, seeing the classroom set up, knowing we're about to be packed out and have a ball all day. I can't wait till we can get back to that. So until then, we have our online platforms, and I do bring us together for what we call um, Coffee with Coaches. We do that quarterly. So you guys have a chance to meet each other. As you see, some of you are neighbors. Yes, neighbors. For someone in your city that was so clever, because I forgot who was all in Texas. So you did good. Mm -hmm. So how, how were your community coaching and co-coaching sessions now that you've had a chance to kind of practice it out on, on some fellow So. Coaches? Yes. Yeah, so as a preacher, you know, we tend to <clears throat> excuse me, want to do all the talking. So it was good for me with the um, community coaching. Um, I did a young lady who we're not really close. Her sister and I went to high school together and her sister and I were very close, but she and I were not very close. And we've become closer in the last few months than we were ever. So the, I used her as my community person and it was good to just listen and not respond. And it's okay to be silent. It's okay to have those quiet moments for you to either think or for the other person to think about what's next and how to mentally process what you're saying or what the other person is saying while you're constantly taking notes. And um, that was really good. When I hung up the phone with her, my husband said, babe, that sounded really, really good. You sound good. So that was also an inspiration that somebody else overheard 
um, my end of the conversation and actually said, you know, you were doing a good job. So that made me feel good. And with the cocoa, with the co-coaching with Coach Alexa, <laughs> uh, both of us, I think we coached each other. We coached each other. <laughs> and we were able to, I was able to also listen to her. And we're at parallel parts of our lives, points in our lives. Her sister just passed away. And she's had some other family members pass away. And I just, not recently, as recent as her, but I also had some um, very close family members to pass away within the last few years. So it was good for both of us to talk and to talk about the grief, the grieving process, um, the transitions that we're in and how we move forward um, with her at work, moving forward and tra possibly transitioning into retirement. We also talked about faith and how um, God can do the impossible. No matter what man says, God has the last word. That was uh, our coaching session was primarily that. And I really like that. We, um, both of us were able to develop some strategies for our coaching businesses in the future. And like I told you before, our session started at 30 minutes and ended at two hours. So I told her she owes me what two hundred and ninety seven dollars times three <laughs> times three. <laughs> right. And I love the fact that you guys got to help each other. That's what it's about. Sisterhood, community, accountability, support. I love that the husband was listening in. Thank you, hubby, for your support. That is amazing. <laughs> and to see you like in the moment, that's just pure gold right there. And I love mm -hmm. the fact that you, you found someone on your own, just using simple instructions I gave of how to reach out, find somebody to coach. It's also preparing you for the process of finding clients, getting people to say yes, following up, staying in touch, making sure they do their part as far as like homework and things like that. So you got the whole experience of being a coach, being coached, being supported, and yes. probably this thing. Yes. So there are so many people, Carla, like you would not believe how many people I've talked to since you've said yes. You started at the same time some other coaches have said yes. And some have gotten started, but for the most part, it's still like, well, let me pray about it. Let me think about it. Am I ready? I'm interested. I'm considering. But they are where you were in 2014. What can yes. you? say to get them closer to here, having those in-person co-coaching, community coaching, hubby supporting moments of, I got this, I can do this, I'm prepared. Like give them some words of encouragement. Well, for me, and this is for me, I, if God dropped it in your spirit, go ahead on and get it done. Quit playing. Um, we say we're going to pray about it. Do we really pray about it? Hmm, some people really do. I'm not going to Say that about everybody. But if you, if God has dropped it in your spirit, just go ahead on and do it. Go ahead, get it done, knock it out. Go ahead and um, what they say, check the box. Let that be the box check off of your list. And that's, yeah, perfect words of wisdom. Um, do you think that would have worked for you back in the day? No, because I was, <laughs> I was a pure mess. <laughs> I was a mess. <laughs> and, see, and that's for, what, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, that's what people think that they are. They're like, am I ready? Who am I to help somebody with their life? How can I be a life coach when my life is blah, blah, blah? You know, so they have these excuses. The same thing that you're just about to say. So fill in a blank for them. Well, I was hurting. I, um, I was hurting. I was living in a city. I didn't want to, um, I was living in a city I didn't want to live in. I didn't want to be there. And I was like, why do I need to be, why do I need to be a life coach? I don't want to help these people. No way. No way. I don't want to live here. I don't want to be here. So the other thing that hurts me is I feel like how many people did I miss out on doing ministry with and ministry for or minister to because I didn't move when God told me to move initially. And I also felt like, um, you know, oh, this is going to cost me an arm and a leg. This is too much money. Um, but sometimes you need to just go ahead and invest in yourself. 
And I know it's easier said than done. I've been a stay-at-home mom for 13 years. So um, it's easier said than done. It's going to cost me, I don't know how much money. But if you budget it, budget it out, it'll, um, it'll work out perfectly. And I love the, um, the way that you offer to do $100 and break it down in $100 increments. That, that is um, fantastic to break it down in $100 increments. And it may take the people longer. Um, but yeah, break it down in $100 increments. And for some people, you just got to let them do what they got to do. And I appreciate you um, lightly harassing me every few months. So it, <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't an all out, you know, you need to do this. But just a little lightly harassment. That was pretty good. Thank you so much, Mel. Oh, yeah. You're not the only coach. Y'all love my light stalking harassment. Hey, girl, checking in. How's it going? How's the family? Let's see where you are. Because I remember those conversations of just, I can't right. personally say how unhappy you were, but I heard it in your voice every time yeah. you would mention not really liking your living space, but I love that you have giving yourself time to process it and change it and now be in a place where you can kind of go and pick up the pieces of, like you said, the people you're wondering, who did I miss because I wasn't ready yet? And yeah. while you make a valid point of, you know, I don't like where I'm at, I don't want to help these people. <laughs> it's hilarious, but it does make you think, I've never heard a coach put it like that. Like, who did I miss while <laughs> I felt like I personally wasn't in a place? And yeah. even if, you know, you would have eventually got to that place, can you imagine like us losing touch and you never having yeah. the chance to say, okay, Dr. AJ, my budget is ready. Mm -hmm. Mentally, I'm ready. I'm ready to help. I want to go back and get the people, but where is she? Where I can't find the, the coach and I can't find. And as you see, the price increases the longer you wait. So that hundred dollars a month or whatever people currently need may not be available when they're ready to say yes. So mm -hmm. how do you process all of that? Um, <clears throat> the other thing that I'm very thankful for is that I was able to meet you in person. And sometimes when you meet people on Facebook or Instagram, it's like, is that really that person? Before I give this person, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars, let me make sure they are who they say they are. And that was one thing that really impressed me was that when I did meet you in person, you really are who you say you are. And um, I really appreciated that. And then you even met my mom. And then experience, you have experienced the death of your mother. And then you know now that I've experienced the death of my mother. And you were there when I talked to, I was able to talk to you about it at some point. I remember us texting or actually talking about, you know, the experience that both of us have had with um, experiencing the deaths of our mothers. I don't like to say losing them because they're not lost. They're resting with Jesus. But experiencing the physical deaths of our, um, of our mothers. And that's important as young women, um, and your mother died when she was, what, 47? So experiencing the death of your mother early, what we consider early, um, is it can be a big hit. And that's one of the things that I also want to be able to do as a coach is to help people transition uh, when they're in that transitional space, whether it's the death of a parent, um, the death of a child, because I've had mis had two miscarriages. So just experiencing those tumultuous times of life, the 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 high the high high and the low lows can really throw you for a loop if you're not careful. Yes, and and I have to put a disclaimer, y'all. I cannot visit everybody in person. Meet they mama in person, learn the kids' names and the husbands. Y'all, it's one of me. I met Carla because she passed through my little country town and I happened to be in the area that day. I was hungry, came to find some food and meet the family. They were doing a drive by. Okay, so this was planned and everybody cannot come to my house or my city. Okay, Carl, I got to do it. Because people swear I am their auntie, their baby sister, their cousin, their best friend in their head. 
it was a fluke. It was a fluke. It was a fluke. Okay, so I gotta <laughs> throw that out there because it's people now that will try to find me when they land in Atlanta, and I'm like, Check, that's a good time. They're like, "Well, where you at?" No, ma'am, that's not yeah. what we do today, Carla. And then so. I also, and then I started out. We started out as accountability partners, and also I met you early in your life coaching journey. So, so it was slightly different. <laughs> You are so right. So we definitely had spoken and talked on the phone and um, just stayed in touch. And that's what I appreciate. Um, Because if if I had to look back, uh, because I've heard a coach talk about, you know, your customer's journey and how long it really takes a person to finally say yes and do business with you. And you would probably be the longest person if I had to like do a timeline of what finally got her across the bridge. (laughs) <laughs> so I tell you, so, I tell so you what, cool. I tell you what finally got me across the bridge. I um <clears throat> I'm looking at it now. I made a vision board back in 2016 and it's 2021. I accomplished everything that was on that vision board. Then I also have a journal here. One of my girlfriends gave me when I graduated seminary, right here. And I put all of the things that I wanted to do inside that, um, inside the journal. I wanna go to a NBA game, NBA finals game. I've already been to a NBA game. I wanna go to the finals. I wanna go to the final four. I wanna go to, uh, what is it? The Stanley Cup for hockey. I wanna have been to a hockey game, but I wanna go to like the high, 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 you know, the, the championships of basketball, football, baseball, soccer, those types of events. And I said, but wait a minute, what else do I want to do for Carla? I have a sophomore in in college, a sophomore in high school and a fourth grader. And what do I need to do for Carla? So that was one of the things that was on my list and I needed to accomplish those things. Need to invest in myself. Those, when I go to see the final four and the Super Bowl and the Stanley Cup, those are investments in those people. I need to invest in myself. And as black women, we tend to not invest in ourselves. And uh, that's one of the things that we need to do. You know, and now that I think about it too, thank you, Holy Spirit. We tend not to invest in ourselves. And that also makes us not want to invest in other black women in our community. I can see that wholeheartedly. And I'm thankful for this full circle moment that you know, we went from vision board and knowing what we wanted and accountability process and mapping out the journey, having to get to a better place and finally being ready to say yes to what God has put on our heart for years. Because I meet women who have wanted to be coaches for years. And I'm like, wow, y'all knew about coaching before I did, you know, come on, it's time. <laughs> so what, what are some final tips or takeaways or words of encouragement would you share with the woman who is where you were, who may feel like, you know, she has to get to a certain place before she say yes, or maybe she's going through a loss or, you know, looking for that type of support and accountability that you've had over the years that finally got you here at Coach Carla. Like, what would you, could you just speak and minister to her real quick? So I would like to just tell you, first of all, God knows where you are, excuse me. And as the the church lingo says, God knows your heart. But there are also areas of your life that God wants to just um, break and take and remold and remake so that he can make you a better you and a brand new you. I know that since I've taken a life coaching course, and it's only been a couple of days, about a week or so, that even I have changed. just the questions that were asked, what do I want somebody to say at my funeral? What do I want my legacy to be? Um, Those were just intriguing questions that I had to answer. As a wife, minister, mother, entrepreneur, I've written books, um, planned trips, done activities, events. So now I had to do um, what God has really called me to do. And apart, um, Coach AJ has a coach system, C-O-A-C-H system. I can't tell y'all what the coach system is. You have to sign up for the class for that. But the areas that I want to be able to address are spiritual, mental, 
physical, emotional, financial, social. And you have to put yourself in the middle of all of those spaces. Um, and that also includes your life, your business, and your um, your job, and your career. All of those are intertwined together. So I want to be able to address the whole self. And so what I encourage you and I employ you to do is just to sit down and be able to address your whole self. And uh, you feel better, you feel clearer once, um, once you have gone through this process. And this is just a part of your processing. And matter of fact, it may be good that you're in the middle of a huge transition or you don't feel like doing it. This might be the best time for you to go ahead and do it when you don't feel like doing it because this process will really bring you some clarity. I love that. And I love that you finally here at this moment, Reverend Coach Carla J. Hall's number 168 on our overall roster. 168 or 167? You are 168. I'm looking at it. I may have written it down out of order, but okay. <laughs> I got okay. you 168. Um, and that's out of all of the people that I've ever trained and certified. So you can feel like you used to be here in Atlanta with us when we were doing it live, but really you're online with the, you're number 57 who have taken the online certification um, since we have brought it online as a home study course. And I'm just so excited for you. So what's next? What's, what's, what's coming next? up? Yeah. Oh my what are you going to do a as a newly certified <clears throat> life coach? So I have a brunch on Sunday. <laughs> we have our, um, I'm having, I am hosting a back to school prayer brunch on Sunday, which is August the 15th. And what I plan to do is to also let the ladies know that I do offer coaching services for, um, for those ladies who are in need of coaching services. Um, and then after that, I am in the process of planning a women's retreat, a women's getaway up here. Uh, I actually live in Frisco, Texas. So the getaway will be at um, a resort called Tanglewood Resort. So, and that'll be for 2022. So those are just the two things that are on the horizon. And um, one other activity I've got planned for December, I haven't quite ironed out the kinks yet, but yes, I plan to offer quarterly events and then maybe one big event during the year. I am so excited for you. <laughs> just taking off, you're not letting that certificate collect dust you already had things in motion you like this is going to just complement what I already have going on and you are really carrying out the vision so congratulations on getting here you know yes. and the, the sky is the limit and you know you have me and our team of coaches as your support you got good support at home and now you are in the mentorship phase of being a coach encouraging future coaches who want to be like coach Carla because they love <laughs> our stories and just like you wanted to connect with somebody close by you'll definitely have people reaching out for your hand like help me get past this bridge please so thank you for saying yes thank you for showing up thank you for holding a space in your heart for God to have something to work with to bless because faith without works is dead so for you to have that book of visions that you could see yourself doing someday, you gave God something to bless, something to work with because you were holding that in your heart. So I appreciate being a part of the journey with you and thank you for, you know, coming into our community because you could have chosen any other. No, I couldn't have. No, I couldn't have. No. Well, and, but people th actually think they have a choice. So let me, let me, <laughs> let me sell that point. Okay. Cause they're like, well, I'm going to go look for somewhere cheaper. Or I'm going to go do this because they have certain so-and-so stamp of approval. But at the end of the day, as y'all can see, you come back and you like, so Dr. AJ, when is your next training? <laughs> and, you know, yeah. where am I missed? Yeah. And so, like I said, I would rather invest in another Christian black woman especially somebody that I've met and you've taken, I just feel like you've taken so much time out of, <laughs> out of your life to spend with me. I would have, that just would have been horrible for me to go. And uh, I don't know if this 
oh, this is being recorded, to go to another person, another person's <laughs> program, you know, to say, oh, yeah, I did the Maxwell program and I spent $20,000. Uh, you know, that would have just been horrible when I have you right here. And as a um, black female, you know, the challenges that black females, um, that black females have experienced, especially um, economically, as you mentioned in your um, presentation as well. Right. And I'm glad to say that. And that gives my heart peace. Thank you for, you know, sharing your heart on that. But people, people do do that. I've invested thousands of hours in countless lives, you know, and people still go do other trainings to save money or, you know, try to get a certain badge of honor. But like I said, at the end of the day, when you really are obedient to the Holy Spirit, you are led back my way in some shape or form. So I just appreciate the longevity. Yes, I know Paul, you've been on this path and watching my journey for years now. And I am growing my business steadily to be here for when all the other things that are currently out there are no longer in existence. So thank you for being one to support. And um, I just know that there are some future Coach Carla's coming and you have paved the way and we have set the foundation for how they can succeed and get here get their coaching number, host their event, minister to their people. Any final words before we go? Mm, no, just go ahead on and get it done. Knock it out of the box. <clears throat> we serve a limitless God with unlimited possibilities. So just go ahead, knock it out the box. Um, even if you want to be a health coach, a financial coach, this is going to be your foundation to get done whatever you need to get done. doesn't matter if you have a degree or you don't have a degree, just get it done. Amen. And on that note, we are out. Thank you, Coach Carla. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you soon, girl. All right. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.